How are you busting in No, I'm going my brother are enjoying. They are good. So Thank God. In India, your fame has overtaken Zimbabwe. Really? Yeah. I'm on I'm my way, my brother. Okay. The youth, university guys, get your nation, celebrate Boston. So, who is really Boston? Oh, I'm just a simple guy who lives in the village. I know. Yes, in the streets, people have been singing my name. It's not in Zimbabwe alone. I can tell you the whole world. I've traveled. I've gone to the UK, I've gone to America, I've gone everywhere, you know. I, I, people they greet me from even a supermarket in London and you ask yourself, where, did they, where, do, where do you know me from? But you know when you're popular, you know, you, know, you have no reason to ask where do you know me from. You just greet, greet him back and then move on with life. So, a simple guy, with a rose voice. I would rose I don't have one rose voice, my brother. Wow. Yeah. How much is one? I think price is not necessary, but I'm sure all of you, you know those cars I didn't buy them from an auction. I buy them straight from Rolls Royce. Maybe I can say I'm the youngest Rolls Royce owner in Africa. If you go to if you go to the dealership in South Africa, I'm actually the youngest Rolls Royce client. Wow. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Where were you born? I was born in Arare, but um, uh, I grew up in, in the village. I grew up in Tomboshawa. How was the status of your family? Were they rich, poor, or middle class? Um, to be very honest with you, uh, uh, I was born and raised in a poor family. Uh, it was not as bad as we can sleep without eating. Yes, my parents would try by all means to make sure that we, ate, we eat every day. She pays our school fees. We for uniforms, but you know, it was not. They didn't have extra money to spend after that. We couldn't afford to do any holidays at a younger age. Maybe that's why, you see, I travel a lot. Maybe I did not do it when I was young. And when I grew up, my parents didn't even know how to drive. Today they can drive. All of them, their own cars. Um, yeah, that's what I can say. Tell us a bit about your education career. Uh, about basic all level. No, and I don't need anything after that. I'm good. <laughs> okay, so does education contribute to someone's success? Yes, it does. It does. Remember, life is not like they're reading a script where whatever you read is what you, you know you get. Um, some people they can be rich, you know, you can be rich in different ways, you know. Some people are graduates and they have to look for a job that suits them and get better salary. According to me, because my education was not, uh, I didn't go to A level, not even a single day that I've ever thought of applying for a job because I knew that I'm not going to get a better job. Therefore, I took my way and it worked and it's working. Right now, those people that went to school, they work for me. They try, they explain to talk to me. You know, you know, I didn't go to school to their level, but you know, I need them. You see, I need them because of their experience, accountants, advisors, you know. So we find out, I've imp I, right now, I've got a workforce of more than 300 people that works for me. I'm in Zimbabwe, I'm in Botswana, I'm in South Africa. You see, my head office is South Africa, but this is home, also I got business in Zimbabwe, you know what I mean? So, education is very important so that we can have people to employ. All of us, if you're not educated, then it becomes a problem. Who's going to employ you? It's a problem. Yes. Okay. Can you, was there a time where your parents noticed a 
a gift or a talent that you get at the tender age. Remember, my parents are not prophets. Obvious, when I refused to go to A level, it was a big problem. Right? But I never listened. The way I was acting, is, is what, it was like I knew. Right? Because if I tell you, I left them when I was 17. She cried. My mom, she came with a brother. She cried. I met her in town, I remember, in Second Road, number one Second Road. She cried. I didn't listen. It's like I knew exactly. It's like I was talking to God. Right? And trust me, 18 years, I bought my first car. You see? So, it's like I knew what I was doing, you know? But truth of the matter, she did. She wanted me to go, you know, to A level, maybe end up with university. You know, I didn't have time for that. By the time I was trained, I was driving an X5. I was already in the streets. People they knew that there's a boy called genius. He's also gonna come, you know, like nightlife when you go to the club. You know, who could also afford to buy herself expensive drinks, not as much as what you can do today. But you know, I was living a very comfortable life for a 20 year old person. Can I take you back? Yes. At the age of 17. Yes. You left your mother. Yes. What are you doing? Uh, I think it can be a very long story, but I'll try and uh, summarize and make it short. I had a friend who was working for Angolan Embassy. This friend you know, he told me his boss was looking for LPG, which is liquefied petroleum gas. Most people, they know it is cooking gas. Uh, as a middleman, I went to look for, for gas, which I managed to find, and then called him to say, I found the gas. Guess what he did? He came with the empty cylinders, which we managed to fill. I managed to convince uh, this guy who used to sell gas along Second Road and managed to trust me. He gave me, he filled the cylinders. We went to deliver the cylinders. You know, it, you know, it was just trust. I managed to sell them. Uh, I got paid. When I got paid, I went back to pay him his amount for his gas. I was left with a good uh, profit. But it was the first money that I've made in my life. Trust me, the, it was on a Friday. What I did, I managed to buy a cell phone. This was 2002. When I bought a cell phone, I couldn't wait. So what I did, um, I went to the club from Friday to, to, to Sunday. Monday man was finished. I'm left with the phone without a SIM card. So the phone didn't have a SIM card. Now I'm stressed, my phone is not ringing. So you know what you do at a younger age? Especially, the phones were still new at that time, you know, 2002. Um, you just put a ringing tone, you know, and answer and start talking to yourself, you know? Because I, I, you know, I didn't have a SIM card. Even if I had a SIM card, I don't think my phone was gonna ring anyway. No one was gonna call me. So either way, I wanted to show off. You know, I'm a show off. You see, I wanted to show off. So, you know, I end up putting, you know, the ring I took to myself. But you know, that was it. That was that. So that's how I even started the, the gas empire, which is in every country. You know, you see. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, rumors say that your gas company is the largest in Southern Africa. Is it true? No, it's not true. You know, it used to be the biggest in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. But you see, I think as of today, uh, we're doing well. But you know, I've diversified. I'm now into diesel, petrol, you know, retail. I'm now, you know, doing so many things because I don't look, I look at the margin. You see, the margins that we're getting in cars, you know, they used to be too good. They, you know, you know, when I say good, I mean they were good. Right now, they're still okay to someone who 
always starting. You know, I need real money, man. You know, you look at me, you see money, you know, I need money. So at the end of the day, I cannot deal with small profits. So I still do gas, but not as big as before. I'm big in there as well. Yes. Also, maybe is that when you were growing your empire, is there any time where you felt hopeless? Maybe things were not right with you, where you felt hopeless or where you felt? To be very honest with you, I, I, I honestly think I started well uh, because my first sale was successful. All right, so you know it was tried and tested at the end of the day my business model was very simple where you know it was only a matter of taking product from point a to point b putting markup so no, not a day that i've uh, think i'm reaching a dead end the only problem that we have like any other person, you know, I'm a lack of things. I'll spend the money and the man get finished. When the man get finished, I get back to square zero and think, shit, uh, you know, what am I going to do again for me to go back to where I was yesterday? You know, but it was not like I was, you know, like to answer your question, I've never been in that position where you think, you know you feel hopeless everything of mine it was if i don't have money it's because i've wasted the money it's my fault so i just need and you know my business model i go to the next person i just tell the next person look give us some money let's put here we'll make profit my business is very understandable even a banker there was a point i went to a bank when it was when i went to let me not mention the bank i went to a bank the bank gave me money without quality trial, right? I went to talk to them. I said, look, listen, we, I'm, I'm, I'm a young person and we, 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 we face difficulties in life. We have brilliant ideas, but you know, when we go to the banks, obvious banks, they look at us and say, you know, you're high risk. You cannot afford to bring the money back. But I went to the CEO and the CEO up to now, um, I don't know how to thank him. He gave me 50,000 at that time, which was enough to pay for about at least four or five trucks of gas. And the profit was very decent. So he gave me money after I just went to explain to him the situation that we were facing and he managed to understood me and he gave me money. I went to pay him, we are cool. I didn't run away with his money, you know? So, now that's what I can say for now, you know? Wow. Yeah. So, do you have a role model, a person who motivates you? Um, money motivates me. I don't think, uh, trust me, I don't watch TV that much. Um, uh, I, I just like finding things in life, you know, trust me, I, I know there are people, too many people with money and I see some people they want to be like Jinimbi, but at the end of the, be like you, be like yourself, but what is it, what's only missing in your pocket is money. So to me, I don't think, I, I know that people like you guys. You know, but at the end of the day, I don't know if I'm gonna get there. But what I'll tell you, I wanna die happy. You know, I don't have to be too rich to be happy. I'm re I'm happy where I am today because I can afford anything that you can think of. Don't see me living in the village and think I cannot afford to live in Baroda. I cannot afford to live anywhere. You see, I can even afford to live in LA Beverly Hills, but this is my choice, you see, this is where I was born and trust me, I've lived everywhere, I've got houses everywhere, but I choose this to be my home because you know, the love of, you know, where I was born and raised, yes. Okay, you mentioned that you have diversified your companies. Yes. Approximately how many uh, businesses have you ventured in so far? 
Oh, that's a tricky one. Okay, fine. The way I've designed my business is, let's say we talk of business. I have a few business in Botswana. To me, it's a different entity compared to Zimbabwe. But maybe we call it this one because it's the same model, right? So my main business right now is fuel and retail. And what else do I do that I can add on here? I'm, I'm, I'm opening a rebuilding a manufacturing company. I don't think it's necessary for me to mention it now, but we're opening a manufacturing company for snacks. I think it should be up and running in about six months. The good thing, you know how I do it, if I open a company in Zimbabwe, I put it in Botswana, I put it in South Africa. So automatically it's, it's, it's in three countries, you know what I mean? You see, if it doesn't do well in Zimbabwe, it can still do well in Botswana. If it doesn't do well in Botswana, it can still do well in South Africa. Like now, this is the current country is facing serious financial problems. I'll tell you what, I've never a day that I've woke up and say I'm crying for foreign currency. You know, um, you know. Yes, I based on the Zimbabwean companies, yes, they suffer and they want foreign currency, but me as individual i still get life from south africa i still get life from botswana listen i don't get affected but i want to get affected is people under me that's okay tell us a bit about your club sakai first thing uh, before sakai there were other clubs people talked of one plus one uh, unplanned, UTC, but Pablo's. But what is the inspiration behind Sankai that it overtook every club in Zimbabwe? Okay, let's talk of Jay Z. Jay Z opens a club in New York, all right? Maybe doesn't even go. But the fact is, he's associated with the club. Everyone wants to go to Jay Z's club, 4040. Right, number one, that's maybe let me respond in this way now. Me, I'm a like of things. I party, I felt like in Zimbabwe there was a gap. As I go to this, every time I go out, you know, I could see that there's something missing. I didn't want to open a club, but the amount of money that was needed to open a club, I felt like no one got the capacity or people that have the capacity they they're not going to open a club even you know one day so i said i need to open a club for me and my boys and for everybody where people can go and you know have good time in the evening drink expensive whisks and champagnes which you don't get in other clubs introduce what is happening on international level nightlife into zimbabwe because nothing stops us to enjoy the same the way they do in america in london in south africa everywhere you see but we are the people i'm exposed i travel when i travel i see all these things when i come back home there's nothing it affects me because i feel like why are we not doing it when you know we are all human beings right as you can see some people they ask me like i'm trying to get off the top the line but let me put it this way some people ask me why why do you drive a Rolls Royce going to Dombo Shara? I say, hey, Rolls Royce must go away. <laughs> you see, tell me where the Rolls Royce must go. You see, never undermine yourself. Never ever think this, it here somewhere it belongs. It belongs, you know, when you see my house, my house looks like a hotel. Someone comes to me and tell me, hey, why do you build such a beautiful home or big house in the middle of nowhere? This house, I got no title deed. I say, hey, this house is not for sale. You see, this is home. Right. Even tomorrow there's no genius. This house, everyone will remember. This house will remain with my stamp. That there was a guy by the name Genius. Right. Who used to stay there. Right. I need to leave legacy. You know. So not any person don't can can come and tell me that this is not doable because it's 
it's it's it's it's in the village. As the same applies, you think we cannot do certain things in a Zimbabwe nightlife because in Zimbabwe there is no currents. What are you talking about? You see? We do it because we can do it. Same applies the way you do it in your country. You are doing it because you can do it. So we also can do it. We've got the likes of part ranking, Acorn, you know, you name it. Um, they want to come to Zimbabwe. But me as a promoter, uh, the situation that we are facing in Zimbabwe is real, right? Uh, in terms of bringing an artist, artist is like a product where you have to import using foreign currency. When you, you bring him, you import him into the country, you must pay him up front with foreign currency, right? So when he comes into the country, right, I have to sell tickets. When I sell tickets, I'm supposed to be paid by swipe, eco cash, you name it. But if this guy cannot accept all these methods of payment, the methods of payment that we, if you know it's called transfer or bond, you know, there's different people in Zimbabwe they call it so in all sorts of names, right? So it's a problem that I cannot use that same money to pay. If I want to to, to, to raise money, I must buy with a certain rate, which is which makes it so expensive. And when it's so expensive, it's so difficult for me to recover the amount that I've invested into the business. Therefore, I'm just creating relationships with all of them. Once the situation, once we are liquid enough in the country, you start seeing them coming, if it's not every week, but they'll be coming in numbers. Tell us a bit about the Labour Boys. Um, I'm the chairman. Um, let me put it that I'm the chairman. The chairman? Yes. What does it relate to? They specialize in selling alcohol, imports, and local uh, manufactured um, beers. Yeah. And I think one of the things that made you so famous were your white parties. Are you? Uh, I, I think so. Yeah. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, you are born 10 October. 10 October, and it's around the corner. It's around the corner. Wow. Are you going to throw up? Chief, my party uh, is not a secret. My birthday is not a secret. Every year, we throw a party. Right now, we don't mention it anymore because of the numbers. I cannot control the numbers and today is the fourth, the fifth, I'm left with five days, right, and five days, I was born on the 10th, which is on a Wednesday, we're going to do something mad on Wednesday, waiting for the big party on Saturday which is happening in the most expensive mile uh, in South Africa which is Sentin right where if you are lucky to be invited you see it for yourself even the people that attend genius you know you know even the dressing itself it can t it tells you that you know this is no longer a party people they actually celebrate you know uh, you know my my life they celebrate genius life people they fly from all over in the world to come and celebrate with the genius you know what i say uh, you know what, what i can only say with you know when someone if what let them enjoy the, you know, their, their own way. I, I, I put a problem with people who wants to come and, you know, get concerned or worried about how someone is spending his or her money. When there was, when it was the time of poverty, nobody came and say, hey, come on, you're in the long lane. Come here, let me show you life. No one came even a day. Now there is money. They know how to come and tell me, no, don't, 
if someone with money you choose you choose to go and give it to the less privileged that's your choice you choose to go and spend the money with your girlfriends that's you you choose to look after your friends that's you you choose to look after whoever that's you right once you've made the money spend it the way that you, makes you happy like what i've said it's all about happiness right some people i'll tell you they'll fly all the way from new york first class eh? first class to come and do hunting that's what excites him some people they fly all the way from here and go maybe and have a wedding in Honolulu but when we were born and raised the, we were churches surrounding us where you can go and have a wedding you still get a ring your wedding can be recognized in any court in Zimbabwe but once there is money you know you do it in a way that suits you is it so if anyone choose to put man on twitter man i've got a problem with people that get affected and wants to ask source of funds wants to ask guys hold on hold on you didn't ask me when things were bad when i was in the village now you know how to ask me because it's like i'm showing that you know let's be happy you know especially as uh, uh black uh, brothers let's be happy if someone is doing it is doing well but i what i've seen or what i've realized is we fight each other why is he spending money this way why is you know i don't understand we are about to conclude. Um, in terms of religion, are you a Christian, Muslim? I'm a Christian. Christian. Yes. Then do you have any uh, agenda or you know plan that one day you'll be in politics? Never. A police. I need. I, you know. Trust me. I really want to work with the politicians. Politicians facilitate for us to make money. If I start becoming in politics, it's because most people that are in politics, some of them, if you is their business. That's how they make their end ends meet. That's how they survive. I mean, where I am, I don't need to be in politics. You know, I sleep peacefully every night, not thinking someone must. I, you see, I put following, serious following. Um, even the people that are even in politics, they know genius is there. But not a single day that I was saying, no, no, guys, come and vote for me. No. I'm in my lane. I'll stay in my lane. Politicians, they must be there. We need them. But I cannot join them. Uh, Roma say you once said, people under the age of 65. Yes. No, 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 yeah, you know, it's something that I said the other day, you know, on one of the interviews. But truth of the matter is, it's difficult to measure who would more money than who, because we don't know how to combat this. But truth of the matter, like what I said, is all about happiness. As long as you're happy, to be very honest with me, I'm happy to an extent that I won't even see the next person if he's happy or not. So I think, in my own world, I would everything, so I think I'm good, you see. Uh, if they're doing well, but I don't see them. So from what I see, I feel like I'm the man, you see. If he's there, he also in his own world, he sees the man, fine, like you. So as long as both of us, we are happy. That's what is important. So is there any business goal that you admire? Probably in Africa or in the world. I buy myself. Then, one day when Genius say Jinimbi is born, what will be his legacy? Or what you want people to remember you? Um, I've done 
good to so many people. I know to those who have never received anything from me, they would think, ah, I see on Instagram some they write nice comments. You know, give to the poor. There are so many poor that I have helped when you're not there. Right? And today there are so many families that if anything happens today, so many families will suffer. Too much. You see, I have helped people that are less privileged. Uh, I still help them as long as I'm alive. I still help them. Yes, sir. Then to the young people that are starting their business empires, what words of encouragement can you give to them? Especially at the ghetto, you suppose. No, life at the ghetto is too hard. What do you say? To be very honest with you, uh, I'm a very good example of the youth. I believe everything is doable. I believe God will help someone who's, who wants to help himself. If today you say you want to be a member of parliament, trust me, you eventually become a member of parliament. Because your focus is what do I do to get what? Well, it's, I'm focused on what do I do to make money. Right? So you can spend the first time you lose five years. I'm still, I'm working every day. You are thinking I want to be a member of parliament. So you know, you're waiting for the next, for five years, for the time to finish. Then if you lose again, it's 10 years that you have, that you have wasted. But in 10 years, I've made down many millions. You see? So just look at it. I'm sure you have grew up with a different people when someone tell you, hey, I want to be a doctor. And today they, you know, they are still maybe studying to be a doctor and eventually they are getting there. Then me, I just say I want money. That's my story. I want money, but I know money, I have to do business. So whichever business that I'm going to think of, it must give me a result. The answer is money. You see? And I tell you, you can see when I build this house, uh, I can say to you, this was my first house. I didn't even do it small. When I started making money, I didn't get anything small, but I said, no, I want to see a big one. You see? I could have maybe started with the three rooms, you know, start extending, extending every day. But I just came, I went to South Africa, I did my plan. I need this, I need this. I was working with my architect. When the plan was done, I said, okay, fine. I kept it for about, I think, close to a year. My friends were telling me, ah, you are running out of your mind now. I said, yeah, me, I'm not running out of my mind. Wait, you'll be, you'll be shocked. You see, all of them, after the house was finished, they came back to me and said, yeah, how did you do it? I said, ah, chief, I finished the house. You see, so you find out, to me, it makes me get more confident and even when I'm encouraging young people that anything that you say you want to achieve, you achieve it. That is if you want. It cannot be tomorrow. It cannot be the day after tomorrow, but you definitely, it will definitely happen because according to you, it's like even at school, I choose, I didn't want to go to a level. And up to now, I haven't gone to a level and I'm not going to a level. You see, I chose that. You choose I want to go, you want to go to a level. When you finish a level, you still want to go and study somewhere. You're going to go up to 30 years while you're still studying. In 30 years, I go to 30 years, I'm now talking of my account for plus or minus something million. You know, that's the language that I'm talking. Because when I left school, I knew what I wanted. I'm here. Things are working out for me. I don't complain. You see, people when they are sitting in university, they are studying genius. You see, they are talking about me. You see, anywhere in the world, they are talking about me. They know me. You see, 
is it so yeah okay and ending this in africa what name we know this supposed to name it is poor yeah but in africa um what name would you want maybe the coming generation to remember you <laughs> they don't remember me as genius or Jinimbi. Yeah, yeah those, the, those are my two names. My real name is Genius. But obvious people, they've named me Jinimbi. You know, people, they're just, you know, in the village, tired of calling me Genius, you know? Yeah. They, wanna call, they don't want to call me with a nice name. They have their funny name Jinimbi, but anyway, it is then become popular more than Genius. Which I was left with no choice than to accept Jinimbi, which I was not given by my, which I was not given by my parents. So Jinimbi is my real name. Genius is my nickname, but people they will remember me as Jinimbi or Genius because people it depends who you wanna call me. If someone wanna call me Jinimbi, cool. If you wanna call Genius, cool. Thank you so much, boss. No, you're welcome. You so you're welcome. Thank you so much.